What's going on guys? Welcome back to Jump Ball Central. Today we're looking at 6 NBA rules that if broken can get you banned. First up, shattering the backboard. Although it is much harder to do this nowadays, the NBA does have a rule in place if a player was to break the backboard after a dunk. Long gone are the days of Daryl Dawkins destroying innocent rims, though it could still happen in today's NBA. If this were to happen, the basket would not count and the player would be charged with an unsportsmanlike technical foul. The player may also be fined for the play, which would be determined on a case-by-case -case basis if it were to happen, meaning you could probably get banned. The last time this was a problem was in 1993, on two separate occasions. The first being Shaquille O'Neal having the entire hoop be damaged after a slam, as well as Chris Morris cracking the backboard during the same year against the Chicago Bulls. The amount of times this rule has been enforced has gone down drastically with the invention of breakaway rims and has not been an issue in quite some time. Next up, no logos, except for shoes. The NBA is changing their stance on logos more recently, allowing advertisers to have logos on the jerseys of players. Players, on the other hand, cannot endorse a brand or logo on any part of their clothing or, in Iman Shumpert's case, his hair. In 2013, Shumpert was attempting to sport the Adidas logo shaved into the back of his head, but was told by the NBA it had to be removed. The next day, Shumpert posted a photo of the logo completely shaven off of his hair, leaving a huge bald triangle spot instead. Item 5 of Section H of the NBA Rules Book Extended Comments Section, which governs quote, player slash team conduct and dress, reads, the only article bearing a commercial logo which can be worn by players is their shoes. Years later, Shumpert was let go by the Adidas brand anyways. Standing for the Anthem this was not an issue until recently, but in order to avoid hysteria about a trivial part of a sporting event, Adam Silver reminded players of a league role that players must be standing during the national anthem. It's been a rule for as long as I've been involved with the league, and my expectation is that our players will continue to stand for the anthem, he said. No one knows what will happen if a player does choose to break this rule, and Adam Silver has came out and said that it would be handled on a case-by-case -case basis if it were to happen. The person who has been most vocal about opposing this rule is Kobe Bryant, who has reportedly advocated for players to protest. If Bryant was still in the league, he would no doubt be kneeling according to the Mamba himself. Next up, 6 players loophole. What's the best way to score out of a timeout? Well, Nate McMillan believed it was to have 6 players out on the court. In the game between the Blazers and Celtics in 2008, this was the exact case. On this play, Portland has the extra advantage and easily gets the quick bucket. On this play, Portland has the extra advantage and easily gets the quick bucket. A technical foul was called, but the referees could not do anything about the points on the possession in question. The rules stated that the points could not be taken off the board, but after this instance, the rule was quickly changed over the following summer. After the play, Kevin Garnett can be seen vividly arguing the call, but it was no use. Looking back at it nine years later, this play could actually be the most impactful moment of Greg Oden's career, who assisted on the play. Next up, no double zeros. There are very little restrictions on what type of numbers players can wear. As long as someone else on the team does not have the same number, and the number is not retired by a former player, then it's pretty much fair game. This is unlike the NCAA, where players are not allowed to choose number 6, 7, 8, or 9 as their number. There is one case where a player cannot wear a certain number, and that concerns the number 0. A player can wear the number 0 or rock the double zero on his jersey, but teammates cannot have both numbers on the same team. This is due to the likelihood of a scorekeeper or referee making an error concerning one of those players. Imagine a player getting called for a foul in a crucial part of the game, and the referee signaling the wrong number, or a scorekeeper making an error earlier in the game and not recording the correct amount of fouls or stats. And finally, the 10 second violation. This rule is not the amount of time that players have to get across half court, which was changed to 8, but rather the amount of time a player can take to do their free throw routine and shoot. Maybe one of the most known rules on this list, but it is violated sparringly. Carl Malone became famous for taking forever to put up his shot from the charity stripe, so much that opposing crowds would assist the referee and count to 10 during the attempt. The most notable player in this day and age to struggle with this is Dwight Howard, who routinely had close calls getting up his shot within 10 seconds. It doesn't look like the extra time helped this free throw shot at all, as he has struggled throughout his career. MVP candidate Giannis Antetokounmpo was the last player to be called for this violation in 2016 and has since shortened his routine after a phone call from the NBA. 
Well guys, thank you for watching this video of Jump Ball Central. If you enjoyed, do me a favor and hit that like button, subscribe, comment down below which one is the weirdest, and I'll see you guys next time. Stay safe and have a great day.